Hello and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you. The good morning of the tube. Hope you're well today. Hope you're feeling grand and all's well in your world. I don't know what that was, but that's okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another video. Uh, back to regular scheduled viewing, everybody. So uh, Q and A will be on Wednesday, and I have a very very cool guitar to show you on Friday. Um, so yeah, we we are into 2020 near enough. So, um, yeah, the Q&A Wednesday will be the first video of 2020, which I think is quite cool. I'm really looking forward to that. So, um, so yeah, today's video, everybody, is my guitar is about my guitar collection at the end of 2019. So I'm basically going to show you all the guitars I've got. I'm not going to play every single one of them, but uh, you will see them all at some point. So I'm just going to go through them all. So, uh, and, and, but my head's not, I'm not in a very good mindset today, everybody. I'm a bit kind of like feeling a bit rubbish so uh bear with me but hopefully this video will sort me out because i get to talk about my guitars so so yeah so first on the list today everybody um is this which you've seen a lot and this has become my go-to this is my newest oswald uh, os model uh and i'm in love heavily with this guitar uh, this guitar is one of those guitars that will now be with me for the rest of my life no ifs no buts it's just the bond I had with this guitar from the get go was just incredible, you know. It, it, and and I've played this every since I got this guitar. I have played this thing every day, and I just love it. I just love it. It feels amazing. It plays amazing. It sounds amazing. It looks amazing. By the way, uh, if you saw the first video, all this play, all that wear there, that wasn't there. That's me. That is honest wear. All this is honest wear around here. That's my plectrum. Uh, the reason, and also, if you if I if I get it in a certain light, I don't know if it's a work, but you can kind of see all the plectrum gouges in that part. That that part is almost kind of like recessed, and you can see the. Hopefully, you can kind of see in the wood. It's all divoted and 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 kind of like gouged out. I uh, say so that's that's all me. It, and the the reason for that is it's it's plectrums. I mean, digging in really, really hard. The, pla the, the scratch plates all kind of sc scuffed up as well there. And the reason for that is, like I say, this guitar came along at um, basically, well, let's it, well, it's not beat around the bush, Dave. This guitar came along not long after me and Joe had parted ways. And I had a lot of heartbreak and anger and, and a lot of kind of like, you know, a, a lot of upset that I had to vent. I'm still venting it. And this guitar being basically the only guitar I played at that point in time caught every single second of it. Uh, hence, the finish is gone. Because uh, I'm just hitting the thing. Just absolutely digging in and absolutely beasting this guitar. So, um, so yeah, so this is uh, guitar number one, everybody. I'm going to move on really quick. But... Um... <laughs> just glorious in every way shape and form i love this thing so much and nick you're a god nick you are a god so let's stick with the oswalds and uh move on to the next guitar but i say this is my go-to guitar at this point in time and and I'm, i'd love it again hardtail everybody awesome absolutely awesome so yeah so uh yeah, move on next guitar Okie dokie, so uh, next guitar, I'm gonna, have to have to, I'm gonna have to go quite quickly through these, I just realised I've got, I've got quite a lot of guitars again. So I'm gonna have to go quite quickly through these, otherwise I'm not gonna get them all in. So the next one up is the Oswald John Fashanti Strat Mark III. As dictated by the headstock decal, thank you Nick for that, that is the best decal I've ever seen. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this is my John Fashanti replica that we, uh, that kind of I, I well, well Nick, uh, Nick, built the neck and the body and I basically assembled it and it's basically a replica of John's 62 and we used the specs off my 62 Strat to get this guitar and again this is just one of those guitars that has I just love and again will just be with me to the end of time at the end of, end of my time this guitar will outlive me but um but yeah I love this guitar so much it just plays sounds fantastic and it looks Glorious and the free tone burst that it was because I, I asked for a kind of a faded free tone burst has faded even more now. It's really 
near enough just a two-tone now. It's pretty much just a two-tone, like John's was. So yeah, so that's the front. That's the back. I've got the horrific gouges in the back. I don't know how they happened. But uh, it, on John's strat, sorry, should I say. But yeah, I love this guitar. So uh, number two on the list is uh, this one. The uh, the Oswald uh, John Vashanti Mark III. I say there will be not there won't be a Mark IV because this is this is this is where the this is where that one stops. So uh, yes, yeah, so this is the next guitar. Absolutely love it to bits. Very close to very very close to my sixty two. So was the red one actually. The red the red ones um, this this one and the red Oswald are ridiculously close to the sixty two. It's terrifying in the way they feel and the way they uh, play and everything. So, um, so yeah, so next guitar. So uh, love this one. So next guitar. <laughs> okay, next guitar is the uh, the Oswald. We'll, we'll, we'll do the Oswald first. Um, the next one up is the Oswald uh, Tele. And this is my dream Telecaster. It's got the uh, it's got the belly cut. It's got the arm contour. It's got a copy of my white Strat's neck, which is just ridiculously comfy. It's very dirty now. The neck's very dirty. Hopefully, you can kind of see that. Um, this guitar is absolutely glorious, and I will never need to buy another Telecaster as long as I live. I have my Telecaster. It just sounds the way I want it to sound. It feels the way I want it to feel. It does. It responds and plays the way I want it to play. Nick's pickups are in this guitar. They sound absolutely glorious. By the way, um, any of these guitars, everybody, uh, by, by the way, by the way, if there's any of these guitars you have questions about, leave them in the description box below and I, I will reply about kind of like, you know, if there's any specs or anything like that. So, um, but yeah, this is my Telecaster and I absolutely adore it. And it's really faded now. It's still yellow, but you can kind of see it's fading. And the back's more yellow than the front. So that's the back. That's the front. Hopefully you can kind of see the, the front's a lot more faded from UV exposure. The, uh, the top half is almost white. But um, I absolutely love this guitar so much. It's, it's gorgeous. It looks like a million years old. It's all checked and the lacquer's all checked. And I, don't, I highly doubt the camera will pick that up. But we can try. But yeah. And uh, it's just glorious. Absolutely glorious. Love this thing. It just, yeah, this is my telly. So, on to the next guitar. So this is where the Oswald obsession started. <laughs> um, this is the first guitar that Nick made for me. And again, this is another one of those guitars that will be with me forever. Yeah, all these Oswalds, I will never ever get rid of any of these Oswald guitars. I, 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 they're, just, they're just so special. And this one, this one is probably the most special because it's the first one. And um, all the wear that's on this guitar, again, is all honest wear. None of this wear all these chips, dings, scratches, uh, finger wear, but I don't know if you can kind of see that. If I put it in the light a bit, no, you can't really see it. I'm starting to go through the lacquer on the fingerboard now. All that is natural wear. None of, none of this guitar has been relicked. This is all natural play wear and, and use. And it looks a lot more dinged up in person than uh, it does on camera, sadly. I can't, but I can't get, it, can't get it on the camera. But yeah, I absolutely love this guitar. Uh, we have had different pickups since uh, when, when I got this guitar. I'd seen my Duke and SSL ones, but I didn't get on with them. It's now got Evil Sheep uh, 50s spec pickups in it, which I absolutely adore. Brought this guitar to life even more. The, the Seymour Duncans were okay, but these these are just so much better than the Seymour Duncans. Got three way selector. Uh, the only other thing I changed on it was the scratch plate. It originally came with a three ply scratch plate, but I put a single um, one on it. Just be a bit more true to kind of like the spec because the idea of this one was we were trying to go for that kind of John Fashanti 1955 uh, Stratocaster replica kind of thing so uh, so yeah and uh, there's the I got this one in 2017 and there's the headstock thing that Nick wrote on it and will be there to the end time and uh, all my 
all my four Oswalds come. I'm a lucky bugger, and I've got four of them. They've all got different decals. That was the first one. So um, they've all got different decals, and I love that. I love that they all got different Oswald decals. I love it. So cool. So uh, yeah, and this guitar is just glorious. Just love it to bits. This is my E flat guitar. Uh, at this point in time, I've, I've constantly got it in E flat. It just seems to sound really. Really likes E. Well, he likes every tuning. This there isn't anything this guitar doesn't like. Really, it's lovely. Oh, and the other, the other thing we uh, that I've done to this guitar is I took the lacquer off the back of the neck, so there's no lacquer on the back of the neck. Anyway, so uh, there we go. So that's the that's the Oswald. So let's move on to um, yes, move on to the next guitar. There's going to be a, uh, an abundance of Stratocasters, so just be aware. I, I like Strats. I'm sure you know. So, <laughs> next guitar. Okie dokie, so next up is my Squire Jaguar. Uh, this is, again, one of my favourite guitars. Um, absolutely love this thing to pieces. I've used it so much for recording and live. Um, it was originally Surf Green. But uh, and anybody who's followed this channel for a while will know I, 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 refin I refinished it uh, in white and put a um, tortoiseshell scratch plate on it. Because uh, I've always wanted, always wanted a white Jaguar with the red tortoiseshell scratch plate and matching headstock. And it does have a Fender decal on it, but the Squire one is underneath it. I didn't actually get rid of the Squire logo. I, the idea being that if I ever wanted to just kind of like, you know, take the Fender logo off, which... I don't really want to because I want the matching headstock. Um, I've still got the Squire logo. I'm not trying to pass this off as anything other than, you know, I'm not trying to pass it off as a Fender. It is a Squire. I don't know if you can see that, but I've still got the back plate on it. And I just saw this guitar. The only, that does my head in though. That does, I've, never, I've got so much tape in that hole to try and keep that tremolo arm in. But I love this guitar so much. And it's got a, um, it's a white nitrocellulose finish. And it's super, super thin, and you can see the wood grain underneath. And again, it's starting to get, it's starting to get a bit dinged up and uh, scuffed up here and there. Now this guitar is and starting to wear through. And the neck on this thing is just fantastic. This is actually one of the guitars that I've actually left the the polyurethane finish on the back of the neck. It's actually not. I haven't stripped this down to the wood because it never gunges up. It never impedes your playing. For some reason, this neck is just fantastic. And uh, yeah, so this is my Squire Jag, everybody, that I've still got and I still love. And I don't play it a great deal, not as much as my other guitars, not as much as my Oswalds or my other ones. But when I do play it, I I always remember why I love it. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those guitars that like I won't play for like say a week or two, and then I'll pick it up and I'll just like I remember why I love this guitar so much and why again this guitar will never leave me. So uh, so yeah, so. Glorious Squire, vintage modified, stock pickup, stock electric, stock bridge, stock tremolo. Uh, the only thing I've changed on it, like I say, is the refin. Other than that, it's just a stock Squire because it's awesome and there was never any need to change anything else on it. Sound, these Duncan designed Squire pickups are absolutely stunning. <sighs> but unfortunately, this does make me want a Fiesta Red Jaguar. So I want a Fiesta Red Jaguar with matching headstock. So that might happen in the new year, maybe, if I can afford to. Anyway, glorious guitar. Let's move on to the next one. And this this breaks up the Stratocasters as well. <laughs> so I've got so many Strats. Okay, so uh, yeah, next next guitar, which technically isn't a guitar. It's a bass, and it's my Columbus bass, the 1970s Columbus jazz bass copy. And uh, this guitar, this boy's bass, should I say, is just <sighs> for me. I love it. it. It took me a long time to get it to get it to play right. When I got when when I got this bass, it was kind of like um, it, well, it was it was a train wreck. The action was about that high, and I'm not even kidding. Um, the neck was like a it was like a longbow. You know, it, you could pull the strings out and do Robin Hood with it. It was just horrific. Uh, the electrics barely worked. The machine heads were kind of seized. It was filthy. It was just a, it was a mess. It was a mess. And it took me years, and I mean years, to get this thing to actually behave and play right. And it's still not great down the low end. It, in all fairness, it needs a fret level, um, which I'm going to get done in the new year when I can afford to get it fret leveled. 
Um, but this 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 is a score. This is all the bass that I record on songs. Uh, all the songs you've heard recently that I've been releasing that have bass and well, kind of full band on it. This is the bass, and I just love it. And it's got this. It's got a weird serial number. I don't know if you can see this, but um, there, which is ten. It looks like a ten. Ten dash F. I don't know what that means. If anybody knows what that means out there in YouTube land, please uh, let me know what it what it means. It also needs a new nut as well. The the nut is is, is knackered. It, it's absolutely it's ruined. Basically, it's absolutely ruined. But other than that, this this bass is amazing. There's some gorgeous kind of like um, wood kind of well, I don't know if it's called flare, but it's figuring, isn't it? Uh, the wood figuring on the back is absolutely glorious absolutely stunning and i love the maple fretboard with the with the block inlay it's absolutely stunning it's nice it's really really nice i love this bass and it sounds great di because i don't actually have a bass amp uh worth recording with so um i do have two bass amps in the house but they're not very very good for recording so i just di this bass and it just sounds really nice it always sits really well in the mix it's a really easy bass to mix which is really, really nice because I did have, I've had a few basses when I record songs and sometimes they're a bit of a, bit of a, a pig to mix. This one is just, it just sits. Wherever you, wherever you want it to sit, it just sits. So it's glorious. So yeah, so this is my bass, everybody. So uh, moving on, next guitar. Technically, this isn't my guitar, but uh, this is my sister's nylon string. And if you've seen the video recently, I say this is the guitar that changed my entire life. This is the guitar that without this one, all the other guitars I'm going to show you today won't exist. And I won't exist in this capacity either. And I'm not sure I would exist in the living capacity either. Slight attitude. But it's a glorious little classic, classical guitar and it's an Admira. Um, and I love it. It's really, really nice, and yeah. So this is the uh, this is the first of four acoustics I think I've got. So yeah. So uh, this is the guitar that changed everything. So slightly attitude, but that's okay. So yeah, I love still having this, and uh, yeah, great. It's, it's nice to have it back. It, I, I do need to get it put to play better, but that'll happen in the new year without doubt. So yeah, so um, where are we now? Yeah, next guitar. So uh, moving back to electrics. Okay, so next guitar, which technically isn't mine either. This is my cousin's, um, but I've had it for I've had it since I first started playing guitar. So I've owned it. Well, I've had this guitar. I haven't owned it, but I've had this guitar since. Uh, for 17 years and um for the first five or six or seven of those it didn't work but then um it works now and that's all that matters so this is a 1962 hofner very thin and it is very thin it's it, the, the really weird thing about playing this guitar is although it's ridiculously thin and totally hollow there's there's no there's there's kind of like a not really a centre block. It, it, it's totally hollow, um, and I've got the, I've got the. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Oh no, I don't think you can. Uh, but I've got the original poster for it up there, which is really really cool. But um, it feels really robust, considering how thin and kind of pressable it is. Because you can actually press in the top. It's a bit terrifying. It's a really solid guitar. It's not the easiest guitar to play. I will definitely say that it's not an easy guitar to play, but. It is amazing. Uh, I've changed out machine heads. I've got some Wilkinson machine heads on it. The originals were long gone. The ones that were on this when I got it were just just terrible. They just didn't work. They weren't very good. So I've got these Wilkinson tulip head ones on and they're just wicked. This guitar is just is just amazing. And it's got... Um, I mean, it, it's absolutely battered and beaten. It's really... I don't know if you can tell. Uh, the selector switch was originally here. I moved it down here, so and I, and then I plugged the hole, 
So uh, it was originally up there, but it was a nightmare because you'd always catch it when you were playing it. Somebody moved it up there. Originally, this guitar wouldn't even had a selector switch. You selected pickups by turning the volume off. And it works in the same way as Les Paul. You've got two volumes and two tones. Um, this is the tail piece that came with the guitar when I got it. It's not the original. It's not the original bridge. We've got all the original wiring and pickups. Uh, original frets. You know, original nut with a zero fret as well. It's got a zero fret, which I really, really like. I, I like zero frets. I think they're quite cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing guitar. And also, something I did recently is I flipped the bridge pickup it's backwards because the bridge to be intonated has to be really close to this bridge pickup and when the pickups are normal around the pole pieces are literally there and it makes the guitar sound really tinny when you're in the bridge position and I didn't like that it was kind of unusable it's very ice picky it was it was really shrill because the middle selection both pickups on together and then the neck pickup the neck pickup is to die for it really is. That net pickup is one of the best net pickups I've ever heard. And I, I, I will stand by it. It's absolutely glorious. It's a gorgeous sounding pickup. But this bridge pickup on its own, when you're down there, was just shrill and obnoxious. So I thought, well, flip the pickup. It's a single coil. Uh, it's not a humbucker or anything. And I thought, if I flip the pickup, the pole pieces will be further away. And it worked. So now this guitar sounds bigger on that bridge pickle than it used to. <laughs> I don't know how much of the amp it'll pick up because it's a really, I mean if I turn the volume off, sorry attitude. But yeah, it's, it's a great sound. <laughs> guitar is just glorious I absolutely love it and again this is another guitar that's took a long time to get right you know for, for it to play properly and for it to, to, to feel good and, and for it to actually play properly and get it intonated properly it's took a long time but good grade is it a good guitar so yeah this is um this is the next guitar. so uh this is next guitar on the list and let's move on to the next guitar on the list I don't know about that. but yeah Hoffner very thin from 1962 everybody Absolutely glorious. Oh yeah, and also this one's got a flame maple back. I don't, um, got the strap out of the way. Let me see if I can get it in the right light. Hopefully you can kind of see, I don't know if you can. Yeah, it's got a very flamey back to it, which is really, really nice. So, moving on to next guitar. Okay, so uh, on to the next guitar, which is my Echo 12 string acoustic, or is it Eco or Echo? I don't know how you pronounce it. Well, technically it's an 11 string because I, I got rid of the high G which I think is terrible. Anyway, I don't like it. I nicked the idea of John Butler, and as soon as I tried it, I infinitely preferred it. It's got a zero fret again. Um, bolt on neck, which is really, really cool. Uh, horrific damage in the bottom corner, uh, as you can see. And it's actually split, this section. It's kind of split. And also the top's, the top's starting to pull up now because it's, it's old and, I mean, it's not in any form of tune. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to play it. Um, I don't play this a lot. This is kind of like... This guitar is more like a recording guitar if I need a 12 string. Uh, I, it's not a guitar I sit down and play and kind of noodle on or whatnot. It's, it's just there for when I, can, when I need it. But it's got one of the best 12 string necks I have ever felt. I absolutely adore this neck. And this guitar was a gift um, from my friend John who I used to work with at Old Hat. And uh, he had it for a while. And um, I don't know where he got it from originally, but he had this guitar for a while, and uh, and basically passed it on to me. And again, this is not, this is just another one of those guitars that I just can't see myself ever getting rid of, just because it's got such a cool. I mean, it's out of tune, I know, but it's a really rich sound. You know, it's a really rich sounding guitar, and I, I, I do like it a lot. It's so out of tune, but that's okay. That's okay. So. Um, but yeah, I do love this guitar so much. It's it's just wicked and 
it's just the, the neck on this thing is so comfy to play. The, the action's not ridiculous. I've played worse. The action's up this low end is so low. It's so easy to play open chords on and stuff like that. Once you get past like the seventh and ninth fret, the action gets a bit kind of high. Um, but the next straight as an arrow, it's it's really really good. The truss rod works really nicely, and you know it's missing a bit of binding up here as well um, on the neck. If you can kind of see the binding comes to about there and then stops, it's broken off, so you can kind of see. Uh, this scratch plate as well is something that I've put on. It's just a bit of basically vinyl which I cut to look like the scratch plate. It doesn't have its original scratch plate. That, that's come off a long time ago. But um, but yeah, so I, I basically just kind of like drew out the kind of idea and shape of what an Echo scratch plate looks like and, and I cut it out of this black vinyl stuff and uh, got it on there and it came out really well actually. I was quite impressed with myself, which is, doesn't really happen. Also, I think it needs a new bridge. The, the bridge is absolutely split. It's got these brass pins as well, which are really, really cool, but I think they've gone a long way to splitting the bridge. So it needs a lot of work, this guitar does, and unfortunately I don't have the money to um, to do that. So at this point in time, it's it's a, when, when you get it in tune, it holds tune okay. Uh, it'll, it'll work out, and yeah, it just does it, it does its job really nicely. But uh, it does need a lot of work doing to it, and I wish, I wish I had the money to just kind of get it back up to spec, so to say. But, um, sadly, other needs come first, unfortunately. And, uh, but yeah. And this guitar, it does work. It's amazing. I absolutely love it. And it's just glorious. And it smells nice. I don't know why, but this, all, all acoustic guitars always have a distinctive smell. And this one really smells nice. Uh, this, I don't, I can't tell. Ranger? I don't know. Was that, was that a model of Echo Ranger? I, can't, I think it was one of Echo Ranger. And it's absolutely amazing. And there's the, uh, I don't know if you can see, but there's the thing inside. But yeah, this guitar is absolutely awesome. So thank you, John, wherever you are in the world. And um, yeah, absolutely love it. I haven't restrung it <laughs> since I haven't restrung it. I got this guitar in like 2013. I haven't restrung it yet. Because I dare not take these pins out. I'm too afraid of the, the bridge will fall apart. Anyway, let's move on to the next guitar, which is also an acoustic. Okay, so uh, we're going to stay in acoustic land for the next two guitars. Uh, this is a guitar I bought last year from a, a local cash, uh, local secondhand shop, uh, Cash Converters, where I, I get quite a lot of my secondhand guitars. And it's a Honor. It's a um, Western series Honor. And it's basically just like a copy of a Martin D28. Uh, it's got like the, uh, the double dot on the 7th fret. And it's, got, it's kind of a jumbo acoustic. And this... Uh, when I got it was a wreck, but after giving it to a local guitar uh, luthier who specializes in acoustic guitars, when I got this guitar back, it just, it was just glorious. And I have this guitar constantly in open C. This is, I don't know if this is my favourite acoustic, but it, it, it's very close to being my favourite acoustic. The way it feels, the way it plays, the neck is absolutely stunning. Uh, I upgraded the machine heads to some sh uh, shallow machine heads, which my friend Richard gave me. And uh, I also chopped the headstock off because it was really ugly. The top, I didn't like the top of the headstock, so I chopped it off and made it this really dinky looking thing. But... Um, because uh, at the top of the head, so I just didn't like it, so I just hacked it off just to make it, and I love it now. I just make it a bit more aesthetically pleasing to me. Uh, but yes, it's it's amazing. Um, yeah, I love this guitar. It's, it's probably a maple neck that's been painted black. I don't think it, it's it's not rosewood or anything. The bridge itself is maple as well. It's just painted black. Um, so it's a maple bridge, pretty much it's maple fingerboard and maple neck. It's just been painted to look. Not, so to say. Um, but yeah, 
absolutely glorious. I mean, I've always wanted a Martin style acoustic, like a D28. Uh, and this covers that need and it sounds glorious uh, and it records really well as well and it's got all the right amount of lows and highs and mids it's just it's just such a glor glorious acoustic and if i'm gonna play acoustic this is kind of other than the next one i'm gonna show you this is kind of one i go to a lot because i love open c as well it's devon townsend's fault so anyway um yeah this is uh, next guitar on the list this is my honor uh western series um it's a korean one but i love it and again I, I, I won't part with this acoustic. This is one of those acoustics I'll have forever just because it feels like an extension of me. I just love it. I've got such a bond with this guitar, it's, it's unreal. So, uh, so, yeah. Moving on to the next guitar, which is the last acoustic. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's, get, let's get to this one. This, one, this, this acoustic has been with, with, with me the longest. Okay, so final acoustic is my Tanglewood acoustic guitar. This is the uh, Tanglewood Premier Series. And I've had this guitar uh, since 2009. This is my main acoustic since 2009. And it's, it's small bodied, but it's got some punch. <laughs> it's just glorious. I love this guitar so much. Um, the bridge is broken off. I've, I've re-glued the bridge. Uh, the action is a million miles high now, sadly. It needs looking at properly. Uh, it really needs... Again, this is another guitar that needs some TLC. It works fine and it plays, but it does need some TLC. And the, the bridge is stable, but it could do with sorting out, if you know what I mean. So in the new year, this will be going to a guitar luthier as well with the nylon string acoustic you saw earlier on, they're both going to be going uh, to get looked at and, and sorted out so they play as well as Mr. Honor over there because this guitar used to be really, used to play so easily and over the years, um, the glue obviously gave way on the bridge and, and it caused all sorts of issues. And But yeah, it, it's really battered and beaten this guitar. I probably won't pick it up on camera. Uh, you can kind of see the plectrum wear on, on the rosette there. I think that's what it's called. That thing there, if I get it in the light right, you can kind of see there is a lot of plectrum wear. But yeah. Um... But yeah, this is this has kind of like been my main acoustic for ages. And the acoustic, uh, in the songs I've re released recently, all the acoustics you hear are, are this guitar DI'd. The DI on this acoustic is spectacular. It really is. Um, it's absolutely amazing. I love it. I love the headstock on this guitar. I love I love the neck on this. The neck on this thing is just like an old friend. I say, it just, it just needs this bridge and the action sorting out. And... The intonation sounds a bit iffy as well now because of the bridge. I mean, it's in the right place, but I don't know. I don't know. It's just something isn't right. It just sounds a bit sharp to me. So, um, but we'll find out in New Year anyway. This is one of the guitars that I will definitely be putting money aside to get repaired because I need it. It's my main acoustic next to the Honor. And uh, I do plan to go out doing some acoustic things next year. So I need, uh, I need this... Um, in the best condition it can be, best playing condition it can be. So, uh, so yeah, this is my uh, this is my last acoustic. I've got, like I say, I've got my big kind of like you know the honor. I've got the big kind of like the big bodied honor there for, for the like the big beefy kind of like sounds. I've got got my little acoustic here for the punchy kind of sounds. I've got the twelve string and I've got um, the uh, the Hofner, uh, 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 very very thin semi-acoustic for those kind of like semi-acoustic kind of sounds it covers all those kind of acoustic bases that i need so to say so uh so yeah so that's all the acoustics let's go back into electric land don't say electric you might get copyright flagged and just see Janie hendrix lurking in the shadows waiting say it 
Go on, say it. Also, play some while you're at it. <laughs> Give me your money. I'm not bitter at all towards the Hendrix estate. Okay, okay, next guitar is the guitar you saw in the intro jam, the guitar that never fails to inspire me, the Tokai Gold Star Sound, which uh, was very, very kindly given to me this year by a very awesome guy. So, uh, Tommy, if you're watching this video, again, another guitar that will never leave me. I have such a bond with this guitar, it's quite scary. Um, yeah, it's ter this guitar is terrifyingly good. It's absolutely to die for. Um, I have changed the wiring slightly on this. I do, I've do. i got a master volume and a master tone. The middle tone is no longer in the circuit. It's there, but only for aesthetics. The, uh, I've got a master tone over everything and a master volume. But this guitar is absolutely stunning. And it is as close as monkeys to a real 64 spec Stratocaster. It's terrifying. Uh, the 64 Strat that I was lucky enough to play because I, I remember it so well because it made such an impact on me. When I played this guitar for the first time, I was like, that's exactly how that felt. It, it, it just felt like an old friend, and that's exactly what this thing feels like. I absolutely love this guitar so much. Um, oh, another thing I changed out as well is I've got a mint green scratch plate on this thing. But other than that, just because I, I wanted to kind of have that 60s kind of... Um, that 64 look. But this guitar is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Uh, Tommy said I th he, he thinks it's an 83 and 84. I think it's an 84. Um, but we're not 100% sure. It's really hard to date these old Tokai's. But it's it's an 80, 83 or an 84. Uh, I, I might, it originally came, it had a Fender decal on it. And I was like, don't want that. So I managed to get hold of um, a Tokai Gold Star logo. And uh, so I've got the original Tokai logo back on this guitar now. And it's just the one of the, it's one of the most amazing strats I've ever played. And it it's just stunning. In every way, this guitar is stunning. The way the tremolo feels, the way it plays, the pickups, the way they sound, the neck is just oh heaven. It's a uh, it's uh, it's not a uh, it's not a slab board either, it's the veneer board like a sixty four would be as well, which is really, really cool. Uh it's a round lamp laminate uh yeah it's round laminate board on it it's just really really cool and yeah that's a lot of attention to detail to do these kind of things it, it's so close to a 64 strat it's terrifying um yeah the way the neck feels is it's it's probably a little bit wider this neck than a 64 but it, it's not you know it, it, to me it feels the same you know what i mean it's probably a smidgen wider but not by a great deal but uh i ain't got a problem with it being wider actually kind of all like that so yeah so um so that's the next guitar on the list. Absolutely love this guitar to bits. Say so thank you to Tommy for, the, for this gift. I am absolutely... Every day I play this... I do play this guitar pretty much every day. And every time I play it, I am just blown away by it. I'm, I'm so grateful and thankful to have this guitar. And I just love it so much. And, um, yeah. It's just wicked. It's just absolutely wicked. It's absolutely wicked. So, moving on. Next guitar. Okay, next guitar. I'm going to have to crack on because I've still got quite a few to get through. Next guitar is The Thing that you saw in a recent video. This is the, the Squire Affinity with humbuckers. And I've uh, relicked it. Very, very lightly. It's not a heavy relic. But I've also added these black pickup surrounds around the humbuckers, which I really like. And I don't know why, I just love it. And then there's there's the back again. Very subtle relicking, nothing kind of crazy or over the top. But I love this guitar. It's nice to have a humbucker strap uh, back in my life. And it really does sound good. And uh, Absolutely love it to bits. Love this guitar. So cool, so cool. So yes, The Thing. I don't really name guitars. I just, because I don't believe in it. But I just refer to it as The Thing at this point in time. <laughs> After one of my favourite films of all time, John Carpenter is the thing. So yeah, uh, humbucker strat, everybody. Moving on to next guitar. Okay, next on the list is the Jimi Hendrix Squire of mine, which uh, again used to be three tone, uh, two tone sunburst. Uh, pretty much, it was exactly the same as the thing you just saw. This was, but uh, I got it refinned in this kind of off white colour. Uh, it's got Evil Sheep uh, Experience pickups in it, like Jimi Hendrix kind of inspired pickups. And they're absolutely amazing. This guitar, I've had this guitar for a long time. This was bought by uh, bought for me by a very very special person, um, and it was a gift. And uh, again, 
another guitar that will never leave me. I've got I've got a very strong emotional connection to this guitar. Uh, it's really it's not easy to play because it's upside down. I always get these; they always get in the way. But um, because of when and who bought me this, it, it's a very special guitar. And there's Jimmy on the back of the headstock. So uh, so yeah, love this guitar. Really really cool. And it's all checked and the lacquer's all checked and broken. It's just super cool. So yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, next guitar, I'm going to have to crack on because we've still got a few to do and I'm running out of time. Totally misjudged the time on this video. So the next guitar up on the list is the um, what I call the Carl Caster because this was given to me by my uh, very good friend Carl. Um, and I say, I uh, just love this guitar. This is a 19... Uh, the suede straps kind of melted into the finish there for some reason. This is like a 1974 Ibanez made kind of strap copy. Uh, that somebody's uh, messed around with and it's a hardtail now uh, it was a hardtail originally but somebody's put a Fender logo on it somebody's played it because that's all real finger wear and it's a natural it was I did I did have it white at one point but I've, I've returned it back to its natural finish and um, it's just one of those just ridiculously gorgeous guitars the neck on this thing is fantastic and uh, yeah I absolutely love this guitar it's really really cool original pickups original electronics um yeah super cool and the, the wood grain on this thing is stunning absolutely stunning so yeah moving on next guitar okay i didn't realize how many guitars i've got this is getting silly so next guitar uh this is my first ever electric guitar everybody this was bought for me on my 16th birthday by my dad uh for me and i say it's a washburn maverick series first ever guitar this is where it started for me properly uh, after the nylon string, well, as soon as I got this one, I really started to dig into the electric guitar, and this uh, this got me on my way. So, and I love it. Again, glorious guitar as well. It sounds sounds great, plays great. It's tiny, it's so good. Okay, so uh, yeah, just unreal, unreal guitar, awesome, perfect begin, like perfect guitar to learn on. So moving on, next one. Okay, okay so our next guitar is the black. Uh, Korean Squire branded Fender for the uh, Japanese market. Uh, there's not many of these, but they are really, really awesome guitars. This was basically my first kind of Fender, really. This is like my first Strat that kind of made me, kind of, well, not my first Strat, my first Strat was a Squire, but I'll talk about that in a bit. But yeah, so this is um, this is amazing. The neck on this is ridiculous. It's so skinny. Uh, it probably looks a bit weird with the fisheye lens. It probably looks like it's bowed, but it's not. It's just the lens on the camera. But it's an amazing guitar, and it's just just awesome, absolutely awesome. Um, yeah, not much more to say. Oh, it's been refinished black as well. It was originally kind of like some kind of electric kind of blue color. So, uh, so yeah, we got to crack on. Move, Dave, move. Okay, so uh, this is the Ambercaster, and uh, again, this guitar holds a lot of emotional significance to me because uh, Joe bought me this guitar uh, it's changed a lot there's not a lot of originality left on this guitar now but um, I say this guitar is really really important to me and will be for the rest of my life just because of because uh, Joe bought me it and um, yeah I, I don't play it a great deal but I won't ever get rid of it it's one of those it's just glorious guitar and I just love the kind of the transparent amber finish on this guitar is just amazing and uh, yeah, and I've got five springs in this one. This is actually a rare guitar where I've got five springs in the strat. So uh, so yeah, <sighs> I don't know. So uh, moving on, next guitar. Okay, so that one wasn't easy. So next guitar up is the uh, the Rose Morris SG copy from nineteen seventy. Uh, well, somewhere in the seventies. Don't actually know the exact age of this thing, but it's a very very glorious guitar. As you saw in the video, um, it's such a cool guitar, absolutely cool. And I love the color, I love the bat wing, I just love the way this thing plays and sounds, it's so cool. So, yeah, I love that neck as well, the inlays are absolutely amazing, and the headstock's really cool. It's such a it's such a rip off, I love it. <laughs> and uh, nylon saddles, which is cool. Okay, so, um, so that's that one. Moving on to next guitar. Oh, gravy. Okay, so we are coming to the end now, near enough. So this is my first ever Les Paul. It's just an Epiphone, and uh, yeah, there's not much. There's not much to say about this really, other than it's just, yeah, this is just ace. This is my third ever guitar. This one, and again, 
just such a cool guitar. I love it. Love the kind of flaminess of it. Uh, but I'm not a big fan of tomato soup bursts like this one is, but um, it's a cool guitar. I love this guitar. And the neck is, again, the neck on this thing is fantastic. It's really, really comfy. Um, not a big fan of the way it sounds. I don't really like these pickups. But uh, again, because it's my third ever guitar, and my mum and dad bought me this for my 17th birthday. Um, it's got a very, very strong emotional attachment to it. And that neck is as straight as an arrow. It's terrifying. So, um, yeah, I love this guitar. Uh, yeah, it's just beast. Absolute beast. And I've had it, like I said, I've had this for a, a long... I've had 16 years. So, that's so, my first ever Les Paul. So, next guitar. Okay, so the next guitar is the Lemon Drop. The vintage Lemon Drop, everybody, that uh, I absolutely adore. Back to original Peter Green look and spec now. But, yeah... Glorious guitar, this one. Again, would this be a guitar I'd ever get rid of? I highly doubt it. Again, I've done so many videos with this guitar and I've done so much with this guitar. It's really hard to part with it. And I don't think I'd be able to part with it even if I tried. So I, I just love it so much. Um, it's not my favourite Les Paul that I own, but it is... Because I've done so much with it and got such a bond with it and know it so well, it, it's it, it, I've got such a connection with it. It's, it's hard to kind of think what it'd be like if I didn't have it if you know what I mean but uh you know time will tell how that goes but yeah I love this guitar so much and I say it's in a lot of videos this guitar is in a lot of videos this is the uh this is the guitar I did my first ever untitled with as well uh sat pretty much where I am now as well so how weird is that uh but yeah absolutely glorious guitar the lemon drop it's a boat anchor it weighs a ton ton a ton it weighs a ton could be weighs a ton so uh yeah glorious guitar moving on to the next one Okie dokie, so this is my favourite Les Paul that I own. This is my Revelation uh, RTL 59 with the, the top stripped off, natural finish. And this is my absolute go-to Les Paul. I absolutely adore this thing to bits. It's absolutely glorious. And I think it looks really cool with the stripped top. It just reminds me of Paul Kossoff's. Um, I've took the pickup cover off the neck pickup now as well, so I've got both open coils. But yeah, love this guitar to bits. Sounds sounds like I want a Les Paul to sound. You know what I mean? It's, it's a Telecaster on steroids is what this is. And I love it very much. So, uh, so yeah, just beast. Absolute beast. And I love it with the top stripped off. Like I say, everything else is as it came. But I didn't like the cherry burst, so that went. But <sighs> this guitar is amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, moving on. Okay, so you haven't seen this one yet, so I'm not going to tell you much about it. Yes, more on that one coming soon. So um, the next guitar, second to last guitar now, everybody. This is the holy grail of my guitar collection here. Um, this, because of you awesome people, this is the 1962 Fender Strat. Uh, it's just every day I don't believe this is real, but it is. And it's here, and it is literally one of the best guitars I've ever played in my life. It's got such again, it's so full of music and history. This thing, and because of, I, I, because I'm lucky enough to know the guy who owned it as well, and I know the history. It just makes it even more special, and I just, you know, I'm so grateful. I am so grateful for this, for this guitar. It's just unreal. It just don't feels feels like a dream feels like a dream but absolutely glorious guitar this one and again one of those guitars that will never leave me um this is a guitar that will hopefully remain in the family long after i'm gone and uh will be passed down fingers crossed that's but that's my hopes and dreams for this guitar uh is it for it to stay in the family and just kind of be passed down um when i'm not here this guitar will be left to my uh sister's daughter because um I don't plan on having children, so um, so uh, so this will be left to my my sister my sister's daughter when when I'm when I'm not here, and hopefully she can take it and do what she wants with it, and then kind of well hopefully keep it in the family and then pass it down. And, you know, it, it can keep going. That's the idea for this guitar, and uh, hopefully that'll be a reality. Um, I won't be around to see it, but hopefully that'll that'll happen. So uh, so yeah, that's this guitar really the 1962 Fender Strap, the dream came true basically 
so it's just unreal it's absolutely unreal and like I say I'm so grateful to everyone who helped <coughs> you know it's absolutely amazing managed to finish paying it off this year and it's just fantastic so yeah so second to last guitar let's get to the final guitar my best mate okay so we're going to finish here with my best friend this is my 2002 white uh, Fender Mexico 60s reissue Strat this is the guitar that if literally somebody put a gun to my head and said you can only have one of all the guitars you've got what would it be it'd be this one you know what I mean it, it, it is it is it's so near and dear to me this guitar is I've I've, I've got so many hours of learning on it this is guitar that I learnt on more so than the Washburn more so than the Epiphone Les Paul <clears throat> more so than any guitar I own and will ever own this is the guitar that I have put the most hours in learning on and it's the, it's the guitar that I've gigged forever on and it's just it is my best friend this is the guitar that's been there when I've been at my lowest ebb and kept me here um, it's showing its signs of age I mean you can see the scratch plate is broken there the scratch yeah it's broken down there it's broken up here uh, there's finish mi finish finish missing that was really hard to say there there uh, on the back near the tremolo cavity uh, in the neck pockets you know um, it's got dints and dents every one of them tells a story uh, none of the it, it used to be white um, have I got anything white around that I can just show how unwhite this thing actually is uh, nothing to hand sadly um, no I don't have anything to hand not that I can easy get to. So it did used to be white, but it's kind of like a, it's like a more of an off white now. It, it's quite hard to pick up on camera unless we've got some kind of contrast, uh, which I don't think we do, which is a bit annoying. One sec, I need to get contrast. Okie dokie, so when I got this guitar, it was this color, Olympic white. It was whiter than white. It was snow white when I got this guitar. Now, if I put the guitar close to the camera and put white next to it, you can see the actual color of this guitar. So this is the color it used to be. It used to be absolutely white. I, I, you know, I do, I, I've got some pictures to, to, uh, to show, but sadly I, I don't know, well, I do know where they are, but I can't get them in this video, say. But trust me, this guitar used to be this white, and now it's not. It's this color now. It's, it's really aged. It's really kind of uh, discolored. And I say, I, I bought this guitar in 2004. I'm the only owner of this guitar. I bought it brand new from the shop. Made in 2002, it was shipped over to a guitar shop in my local town where I live, and I bought it, and I've had it ever since, and will have it again until I'm no longer here. And this guitar will... Um, I don't really know where this guitar is going to end up, but hopefully in a very good place. It'll be with the 62, most probably. I'll probably leave both of them. You know, Hopefully they'll stay in the family kind of thing, because this guitar means a lot to me. And, um, you know, it just, it's, like I say, this is my best friend uh, and always will be. Uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. I love this thing so much. And it's just, you know, I have my grandma on the back of a headstock with Jimi Hendrix. So there's a picture of my grandma and, and Jimmy. Um, and I just love it. And uh, the strap used to be white as well, but as you can see, it's not anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I love this guitar so much. It's just, I don't gig it because if it, if I lost this guitar, I don't know what I would do. If this guitar got stolen or or broken or anything like that, I literally don't know what I would do. It's just, I love it so much. It's just my best friend. Like I say, it is the guitar that is the most near and dear to me. Out of all the guitars you've seen, this is the one that, that means the most to me. Um, I just love it. Absolutely love it. And it's all uh, it's all original. I haven't changed any... Oh, no, sorry. I changed the jack socket on it. The original jack socket broke uh, about three years ago, and I changed that. And uh, I've nearly worn this one out as well. Oh, and also the frets as well. It's, it's on its third... It's had it... It had it... It had its third refret last year. So, uh, so yeah, it's had three refrets as well. But other than that, it's, it's an all original guitar. And I just love it so much. And it's just one of those guitars that... Again, never fails to inspire me. Never is just full of music, and I just love it to bits. We've had a lot of, we've been through a lot, me and this guitar. We've been through a lot. We've seen a lot, and we've been through a lot. So, uh, so yeah. 
So there we go, everybody. At the end of 2019, that is the guitar collection I have. Uh, um, uh, sorry, I just had to check how much time I had left on the camera because I do need to do some honourable mentions. Um, some honourable mentions that I don't have anymore that I really, really liked but had to get rid of um, was the Squire Bullet. The Fiesta Red Squire Bullet was an amazing guitar. Uh, the Harley Benton, which, oddly enough, I miss massively. I miss the Harley Benton the, with the metal scratch plate more than I miss the Squire Bullet. Don't know why that is. But uh, that's another guitar that you would have seen that, that's, that's gone now. Uh, I can't think of any others. Uh, oh, yeah. I know. I remember one more. Uh, you might be asking, where's the Vintage V6? The Vintage V6 is now vacationing for the rest of its life in the south of France. The lucky git is all I can say. Uh, I That was a guitar that I, I gave to my friends who uh, live in the south of France. Um, so it, it lives in the south of France now and it, it gets played every day and gets gigged at, like you know every, every other week so um so that, that that now lives down in down now in the south of france i'm gonna go and visit it very at some point this year it's very soon so but um but yeah so uh that's where the v6 has gone and again that's that's a guitar that i never thought i would give away but after meeting the two people i gave it to it just it felt right, you know what I mean? It felt 100% right, and I, it was one of those things that I don't regret. You know, I just do not regret it. I am so glad and happy I gave that guitar to them, and I'm so happy to see it being played and being used and being loved as well. It's so wicked, and, and that's all I could, you know, that's all I could ask for, really, of that guitar, because it was, it was again, it was another one of my best friends. I'd spent a lot, I've done a lot of gigs with that guitar. I've done a lot with that guitar. And uh, it really was another one of my best friends. But uh, I was happy to see it go to a new home. I really was happy to see it go to a new home. And like I say, the people who own it love it. And that's that's wicked. And like I say, I'll go and visit them and it at some point soon. And I will document that as well for, for the tube. So um, so yeah, so, um, so there we go, everybody. That's my guitar collection at the end of 2019. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about any of these guitars, everybody, just let me know in the comment section. I'll, re I'll reply as best I can. And uh, yeah, and I'll see you again on Wednesday for Q&A. &A. And um, yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, and good evening. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been informative. I know it's been a long one. There's a lot of guitars here. Um, but all of them have a story. Sadly, if I was to go into the story of them, it, we would be here all day. So I just got to, this is the shortest I could do. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. And uh, I will see you again on Wednesday for the first video of 2020. And um, yeah, Q&A Wednesday. So uh, have a great one until then. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. I will see you again. Goodbye now. Thank you for watching. Um, let's plug in the guitar. This guitar is affectionately known as Mr. White. So I'm just going to play until the camera runs out of time. Thank you.